So I was sent this for review and I've been playing with it for a couple of weeks now, but what is it? So this is the Cinepia CX100 from Zion and caveat out of the way, I was sent this for review, I haven't paid for it, but just bear in mind that I don't always accept things that I've been asked to review and sometimes I even send them back. So if you're seeing this review, it means I like it and perhaps you'll like it too. So I'm gonna run through the specs again quickly because they did go quite quickly there on the intro. This has got 100 watts of power in this tiny unit, which they say is a pocket light and I think it would fit in big pockets, um, but it's incredibly bright for what it is and I'm gonna do a couple of comparisons later on and you'll see just how bright it is. But it's also got a cooling fan on the back. So this runs through the whole of the light so you can see through it and that fan is actually really efficient and you can barely hear it when it's running. So if it is quite close to your camera, it's actually not too bad. Now you can operate this two ways. You can either have a power outlet going into it and I recommend a 24 volt power uh, charger because it doesn't come with them. That's the only downside with this, it doesn't come with a charger. So for about nine pounds, I bought one on Amazon, 24 volt charger and it works with this. So you can either charge the battery, which is here, or you can actually run it from the mains. So it will last a lot longer. So this battery is actually 4,500 milliamps and it will last on full power, they say, for 30 minutes. On both of my tests, I got over 41 minutes out of it. So I, you, if you're on full power, which you won't do that often when you see later on, but that will run for about 40 minutes on full power. And if you've got it on minimum power, it'll go for over five hours. So I was really impressed with that. And it takes about three hours to charge. So it's not too bad. So I would recommend charging it with the actual brick, with a charger itself. You can charge it through a PD cable to a good outlet um, into your mains outlet. Okay, the color temperature ranges from 2,700 Kelvin to 6,500. Um, you've got a CRI of 96 and a TLCI of 97. Then you've got an operating temperature of minus 10 to 40 degrees. This battery is on the side here and this actually works as a battery grip as well. So if you've got someone doing some run and gunning with you, uh, then they can just carry this quite easily, no cables, no wires, quite light. Um, I think it weighs 700 grams or so, so they can run along with this. Or you've actually got two uh, quarter inch uh, screw threads on the bottom there. So if you're running and gunning with a cage on your camera, you can actually have this on top. So you can keep it on your camera itself or you can have it on a stand like I've been doing. Now there's a couple of other things on here I'm gonna show you. You've just got two buttons here. Um, so one of them is actually controlling the brightness and the other one controls the color temperature, like I said, from 2,700 to 6,500. And on the back, so you push once and push again and hold and then the light will actually come on. Okay, so I'm actually gonna show you it now. So if you don't like bright lights, then look away now because I'm gonna point it straight at the camera and light it up. Okay, so three, two, one. So that's pretty bright. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that if it shocked you, but that's on full power at the moment. It's very, very, very bright. It's insanely bright. So I'm gonna bring it right down to minimum power. And so that's now on 10% power and that's still pretty bright. So if you are going to be photographing people, you only need it on that. And like I said, it will run for over five hours. So it's pretty bright. Now, that's without anything on it. OK, so what I'm going to do now is put this on. I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to put this on. It's a, a kind of reflector, just clips on the front like that. Now I'm going to do that again, what I just did. So look away if, you're, if you don't like bright lights. OK, so here we go. So that goes up to 21,100 lux. So it's incredibly bright. So with that on, it's even more powerful. And I'm gonna show you a couple of tests that I've done in a minute. So you can actually get multiple kind of attachments with this. This is just your basic reflector, which works incredibly well. Uh, you can also get softbox for this, and you've also, it comes with a dome. So when you buy the uh, CX100, you get the unit itself, you get the reflector, and you get this dome on top. So this can actually be used as a dome like that, which will spread light everywhere. So if you're doing something like a room, a property uh, in a room, and you want some light reflected off the ceiling, this is good for that. If you're doing portraits and you want it a bit more intense on the person, you can just push it in and use it as a concave. I think that's right, concave, and then the other way is convex. So you've got two kind of ways of using that, but it's incredibly powerful, incredibly versatile, and I'm actually gonna show you a few things that I've done with this. So the first one, 
um, I'm going to show you something I did for a camera review where we used it to paint with light. So we'll look at that one now. And then what I did was took this, which I'm going to be reviewing soon. And I was walking down with this bright light and I was well running actually, and just recording the whole of the scene. Um, so as I ran down, you can see on the screen as it just starts to record all of that light going down that scenario. We did a few of them and this is one of the favorites that came out. Um, I used a, a slightly more amber light and it came out really well. So next I tried going off piece a little bit. So I didn't run down the path this time. I ran down the outside filming the light or throwing the light through the trees as I ran down the side. And this is the result I got using that composite mode. It's absolutely incredible. It recorded just about every single leaf in the shot. So as you saw there, that's incredibly bright. And if you do like painting with light and getting a bit creative, especially with something like the Panasonic S52 and S52X, then they've got a special kind of composite light live view and it works really well with that. So I was so impressed with that picture I got from this just by running down with full power and I had the dome on, I think. Uh, actually, no, I didn't, I took it off. I had that running through at full power through the trees down the side. It lit up almost every single tree in the, in the view. And I think I must have run about 100, 150 meters. And even right at the very end, as you can see again now, it lit everything right in the distance as well. So it's incredibly bright. So that was one really good example. So the next test I did for the brightness, I actually went to a local park in Weymouth and it was very, very dark. It The sun had pretty much gone down about an hour ago. Very tiny bit of light in the sky, but if you were walking in this park, you wouldn't be able to see a thing. But let's have a look at just how bright it was now. And we're gonna take the cover off and I'm gonna put it on its highest brightness. So now we're gonna put this on full brightness, see how much of this land you can see down here. So we're on about 10% at the moment. Let's turn it right up. That's pretty bright. That's the Zion CX100, pitch black at night. And that's, filled, that's lighting up the whole of this field. I hope you can see that. Let's put it on me. So now you can see the trees over here. And you should be able to see that tree there. And all of the grass there. And let's look down here. So you can see just how bright that is. Hugely bright, we're on full power there. So as you saw, it lit up the whole field in that area on full power, it was incredible. I was actually surprised myself, I've done other tests, but that was amazing at nighttime, showing you just how bright this thing is with this reflector on. So that worked really, really well, 21,000 lux or whatever it was. Okay, so another time I tested the lights was actually in here. So let's go to me yesterday, and I'll show you how this compares to the Aperture 120D, which is a bigger light, much bigger light, and it costs a lot more money. Right, so what I'm gonna do here quickly is to test the Cinepeer CX100 against the Aperture 120D, just to see what it's like in an office environment when the lights are bounced off the roof. Bear in mind, this is 100 watts, this is 120 watts, so this should be a little bit more powerful, but if this can do the same kind of job, bounced off the ceiling and get some really nice light, just for interior work, for office work, maybe for portraits, things like that, then that's a lot easier to carry around than that. So let's start off. What I'm gonna do is turn these lights off. That's all we've got on at the moment and the computer screen and the light at the back. So now what I'm gonna do is turn the Aperture 120D on and this is gonna be on full power. So that's on 100% at the moment. That's on full power bouncing off the ceiling. So it's a really nice kind of diffused light. Can be quite, um, quite a nice light for portraits and things because it's bounced and it's really diffused on the face. So that's not bad. So that's the 120D. Let's turn this on and then turn that off. That's on full power. I don't think there's a massive amount of difference. Let's bring that right down to the minimal power. That's on minimal. That's up to 100 watts. So what I'm gonna do is turn this one off and turn the aperture back on. But you can see it's still got that nice diffused light. So let's turn that one off and the aperture back on. And let's take this one off and the other one back on. So I don't think there's a massive amount of difference. It just shows how bright this light is. Um, I think it's amazing. So if I can carry just this around without all the gubbins that this brings with it, it's way more portable. I'm gonna be using this on a, on a property shoot soon to be able to light up rooms in the distance where I'm doing a big wide shot and there's rooms in the background. I'm gonna be using this. So see what you think about that. I think it's pretty comparable. It's not bad at all. 100 watts, pretty much fit in your pocket. That's 120 watts. You're gonna need a big carry case for that one. 
So you saw how bright that was in the office and it worked really well. So to give you a quick example of where I'm going to be using it in the next couple of days, I've got to shoot a massive two and a half million pound house and it's got some huge rooms with other rooms in the distance in the background that may not be lit so well. So I can have this on variable power in that room, just lighting that room so it shows up in my photographs without me having to set up another huge light in there. But because it's so portable, I can do it on a job like that very, very easily. And I won't be using full power. I may be using 20 or 30%. So that should last me for a good couple of hours. And that means, you know, sort of uh, five, six, seven minutes at a time for each photo that I take where I need it. So being this portable is amazing without having to carry around my massive Aperture 120D with all the gubbins that goes with it. Just having this in my pocket would be fantastic. And again, if I've got a portable charger with a portable uh, power unit, then I can run it all day, which is what I plan to do. So the last place I tested this was with my daughter. She was playing guitar in her room and her room is only lit very dimly by light similar to these ones behind. So it was very dark when I went in there and I had this on a very tall uh, stand in the corner of the room, which you can see now. And even on the lowest, lowest spec, lowest light, it actually lit up the room quite a lot. So if you're gonna be doing close portraits, I would recommend having a, another diffuser on here, maybe with a honeycomb setting, and just to dull that light down a bit. Because like I said, if I put it back on the lowest setting, you can see there, <laughs> that looks really cool. That was the lowest setting in the room. So it actually made quite a bit of difference uh, when I was doing the portraits. So just bear in mind that it is a very bright light, even on the lowest setting. So I'd recommend, like I said, getting a honeycomb for it or getting a, a bit of a diffuser for it or using an ND filter if you plan to go close. But again, let's put it on the setting there and then warm it down, warm it up. So that's on the warmer setting. Uh, so it makes quite a bit of difference. So it's versatile. There's no RGB in here. It's basically just those color temperatures and a very, very bright light. But I 100% recommend this for portability. I think it's an incredible bit of kit. Like I said, it's only 700 grams. Uh, so you can carry it around in your kit bag quite easily, especially if you're going on location. So it's something really good to have in your kit bag. I'll leave a price on the screen now. This has just been launched today. So if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link on the screen. You can go to the site, check it out yourself and grab one for yourself.